By the end of this project, you'll be able to access your files from anywhere. You'll know how to roll your own cloud. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's a brand new show yeah. on the Twit Network. Hello, I am Zaktar. Leo, I'm glad to be here. Oh, I am so excited about this show. It's called Know How dot dot dot. In each show, we're going to show you how to do something. I mean, in really show you how to do something. You'll come away at the end of the show really knowing what you need to know. And this is our host. I'm just here. I'm along for the ride. I as Akhtar, I'm sure you know him as a host of TNT. What you may not know is that when I as came to us, he had been hosting a show called This Old Nerd. This Old Nerd, that show I showed people how to have the most tech forward house and life possible. And usually I was messing around in my basement or my attic or in California, I was basically under the house. Right. So now, I get to move out of the basement. <laughs> I come up all the way to the first floor. You can see behind you. We've got the uh, sidewalk. But it's the, same, it's the same idea, which is you're going to really show us in depth how to do things. So we're going to show you how to configure a Wi-Fi router. We're going to show you how to build a PC. We're going to show you how to... So well, today, we're going to show you how to roll your own cloud. Now, the thing is... What is the... First of all, what is the cloud? What is the cloud? You know, we've, we've seen iCloud, and there was MobileMe before that. There's Dropbox. Let's see, so everyone always has this graphic, right? We have this giant cloud, it's where all your files are. That's the internet. That's the internet. Yes, that's so it, right they'll there. They'll show, you know, computers connected to the internet, and it always is a little cloud when they draw the, the diagrams. And if you're using SkyDrive or Dropbox, this is where it lives, somewhere out there. But what we're going to show you is how to take that cloud and put it in your house. That's right, that cloud's either going to go in your closet, it's going to go in your home office, doesn't really matter where it is. The thing is, when it's, your, when it's your cloud, it's totally different. Now, if you have something like Dropbox or iCloud or anything like that, you run into these storage limitations, right? There's like a five gigabyte, you have to right. pay extra money for it. Or SkyDrive's 25, but it's still a lot. And sometimes you have this weird file size issue where you're like, I want to put up a huge video file, let's say a show like this. Right. I can't just share that easily. Can't upload it we easily. We want no limits. Now, am I going to be able to? I understand that if this is in my house, this computer might be in the living room, this computer might be in the kitchen, but can these computers be out on the internet too? Can mm -hmm. I actually share data out on the internet? You'll be able to share data. You'll be able to access your files from anywhere. So I can so, do anything that Dropbox can do and more. That's right. So the thing, I mean, you have certain limitations, just like you'll run into anything, right. but certain products make it turnkey easy. So, like right here today, we have a couple of pieces of hardware. But before we do that, I have to show you my new toy. Okay. <laughs> oh, baby. Get ready. <laughs> this Somebody had a bad idea. Yeah. They're going to let me be in charge of the cameras. Wasn't so my idea. This, is a <laughs> this is a pan tilt, tilt zoom camera. And go ahead and show the... So right now, there's our technical director, Colin, uh, Colin uh, who really probably doesn't like this idea. Behind him is Russell, who is... Our uh, IT guy, Wave Russell, Exponentia Systems. And watch this. I push the button, number one, and it's going to, ooh, this is all automatic. It's zooming in to our stuff. Now, we won't normally do this live, but I just couldn't resist. Look at that! There we go. We got products on the table. That's awesome. So, what are these things? Well, let's take a look first at the Tonito plug. Now, That's what, they, this. what they basically are, they're miniature servers, right? These are tiny servers. The Tornado plug is kind of interesting because that's it, power, and then we have Ethernet on the other side, and it's attached to a USB drive, and that's over and that's here. so that's a USB connector for the drive. That's okay. correct. And if you want to mess with the PTZ, I'm going to try to open this up. You can actually put a two and a half inch drive in there if you want to. It has a bay for that. This is actually the Tornado plug two. So this is a little box that is not necessarily populated with storage, but does connect your external storage to the internet. And if you want to put some internal storage in, you can. Right. Is it a full computer? What's in here? Yeah, effectively, it is a full computer. I believe as a Marvell processor in there. It's it's running its own version of Linux on there, so you don't have to worry about. You're not really administrating that. You're going to do everything through a web browser. And these devices, so the Pogo plug over here. This is another. This is a similar product. This is a competitor. This is the Pogo plug Series Four. And Same this, idea. You've got power. You've got Ethernet. We have two USB. You've got two USB. There's no storage in this. Though. There's no storage here. There is a slot for an SD card slot wow, if you want to cool. use that. And if I can get this to 
pop off, which I have trouble with sometimes. Another USB jack and I believe a port for SATA drives if you want to do that. So really this has a lot of expandability. You could have one, two, three, four drives plus an SD card all attached at the same time. That's right. So right now I have everything attached. I have an SD card over here. Uh, I have the USB drive there. This, I have this is just an external drive. External drive. They both power USB powered devices. So if you have a two and a half inch drive, you don't necessarily need to have it powered up by a plug. So one way to do your own cloud, probably the easiest way is to buy one of these devices. How much are they? They're under $100 each. You can get them on the street for probably less than that. I think that the MSRP is something like 120 okay. You can get it for like 80 on Amazon. We're going to have links for that too. Now the key is it is hardware, but it also has an interface on the internet. There's software as That's well. right. Now, Tonito and Pogo Plug both have apps for your phone. For Android, iOS, I believe Tonito Plug has for Windows Phone 7. They have lots of applications for accessing the stuff on the web, or you can just do it on your browser. So if you yeah, have well, a yeah, laptop, How do I configure this? How do I set it up? Okay, well, setting it up is pretty easy. I mean, it's pretty turnkey when it comes to these two devices. When you plug them in, you're basically just, you, you will find it on your network. Now, I've done this setup already. I'm going to write this down as you're talking. All do you right. mind? Because I'm slow. So I'm going to T-O-N-I-D-O is one company. Yep, Tonito. And Pogo Plug, which has been around for a while. I'm fairly familiar with them, and it looks like they've really upgraded their offerings. Now, I'm going to we can show my screen here. You can see I'm actually already in the Pogo Plug interface. Okay. Now, how this works is you sign up. You get a URL. Uh, you can go to my.pogoplug.com. You can sign in with a username and password, and you can immediately access your stuff that way. So do you create an account at pogoplug.com first? Yes. And then when you attach the hardware, somehow it registers? The Pogo Plug can be found on your network. That's the same with Tonito. When it's right. hooked up to your network and you're on the same network It has a local house. address like a 192.168. Yeah. One of those internal addresses that you don't ever have to use when you're on the web. Right. So you can set it up. It's I, I got to say, setting them up is incredibly easy. I mean, even explaining the steps just seems a little strange because so, Within so, three minutes, you'll have it set up. So you hook these up to your network. Mm -hmm. You go on your computer. You browse to the address they specify in the instructions, mm -hmm. 192.168.1.100 or something like that. And then you'll see interface software, kind of like a network attached storage or Pretty much. something like that. The so right. Plug though, or, does something different than Tonito, though. Okay. Pogo Plug will actually build a, a database of what you have on there. So if you have multiple folders, if you have, like, you have your movie fo files in one folder and you have music in another, it'll actually build a registry. So you can actually go into the tabs if we go into my screen. So let's here. look at the screen again. Yeah. You can. There it goes. Yeah. So, so this is actually the stuff that's on that drive. Right. So I can go and browse through the file structure. I have this my test world area. You can see that there's. Is this actually the uh, SD card we're looking this at? This is off the SD card. Wow. And so it's pretty snappy. It feels right like, now, very quick. And yeah. again, so if I want to go to music, it has its own index as well. Ah, something else. It knows it's music. Exactly. So I see album art. It knows it's it's something that will be played, so it's a little smart about file types. It, that's the Pogo Plug. It's really simple when it comes to that kind of stuff. Tonito Plug, built on Linux, so it's got a lot of power, tons of power. If you want to run applications and things on this, you can do that too. There's even like a web-based, Flash-based music player that if you're on a browser that supports Flash, you'll be able to have playlist management if you go into the actual interface. Neither one right now can take like your iTunes library or your Double Twist library and import it. Okay. That's not something you can do. You can manually manage on the Tonito, Pogo Plug, no playlist support, but you have your files no matter where you go. So how is this different than, say, a network attached storage device? Well, a network attached storage device, if you want to access that via the web, you're talking about, what, a VPN, opening up some firewall? Uh, this is specifically up... designed to be public or out on the net. Absolutely. It's That's really what it is. It's a gateway, this. in effect, to these hard, ex internal hard or uh, in-house hard drives, so that you can access them from outside. Pretty much, it's that. But you could still access them from anywhere in the in the internal network too. In right? the network, you can do that as well. It's, so, so you the, get both. Yeah, so you can access inside your house, outside your house. Obviously, your performance is going to be better inside your house right. with all the networking. Right. When you start doing stuff like this, though, one of the downsides when it comes to rolling your own cloud is that now you are starting to think about what's your upload speed on your ISP. Right. A lot of those guys, when they're like, Ooh. hey, you have 25 megabits down, you have 50 megabits down, well, how much are you getting upload speed? Because if you have movies on this and you're trying to move them up into the internet and you're uploading them and streaming them to your that's phone. That's really important. That's something you might not be aware of. I yeah. know when I was in New York, there was a particular company, I, I believe it was Time Warner, their upload speed was, I'm not even kidding, 768 kilobits per second up. 
But that's fine if all you're doing is browsing or email. But the minute you start, you're, this is a server, right? right. So this you're serving server. files from your house. Upload speed is what counts. Right. And when you're talking about video, again, like if you have a device like I do, let's say an iPad, right? We have an iPad. Right. What, what is something missing from this? No, no expandability. Right. I can't add things to this. I can use Apple's iCloud. Is there a Dropbox app you could put on here, and then I can look at what's on my Dropbox? There are Pogo Plug apps. There are Tornado Plug. I mean Pogo Plug. Plug. I'm sorry, There's Antonio. that as well. Yeah. I can go into that. I'm going to try to open up Pogo Plug and try to get this into this camera. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. And you can see the, this is actually the Godfather running. So you're actually watching a movie? That's right. That's, that's wow. Look at that. So this is streaming from where? From here? This is streaming from here, yes. Now, it's on our land, but this would also work over the public internet. That's correct. I now, what about security? Because that's always a concern if I'm putting something on the public internet. Well, the thing is, to get into your Pogo plug, you have a username and a password. Right. Not, not just anybody can get into there. You can share it with your friends, though, if you wanted to. You can make things accessible to people. But this isn't something you can search online for and go, Google, I'm going to look up So Godfather. it's password protected, mm -hmm. and that's the security that's that keeps people from looking at what's on my stuff. I've talked to the guys at Pogo Plug a long time ago, and I asked them about that. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, what, don't you have access to my files? You can see what I'm doing when I go to your right. site, right? You're working with that. They go, well, yeah. I mean, just oh. like you would with Dropbox, they can see what we're doing, but not necessarily, they're not going to be seeing everything unencoded or unencrypted. They're, they can. Well, that's very telling, though, because, uh, you know, with Dropbox, look, it's the hardware, the, the stuff is stored in their servers, so I maybe have that expectation, but you're saying, Pogo plug can see what's stored on my local hard drives here? Well, not not exactly. They're not going to see everything you do. File name. Well, when you share a file, you're going to get a link from Pogo plug that says, "Hey, so they Leo, could. here's here's what right. I'm sharing with you." So if you really want privacy, use TrueCrypt or something locally and that would protect you. Right. Or How you about could, Tornado plug, same problem there? Tornado plug, I'm not 100% sure about Tornado plug when it comes to that stuff. The guys at Pogo plug I've talked to personally. It seems like Tonito doesn't do as much back-end stuff for you as Pogo Plug. It's Pogo Plug is for power users, really. If Tonito you, is. Ton excuse yeah. me. Tonito yeah. Plug is really for power users because, like I said, you can set up applications. Right. So you can do anything you want on this. That's really a full-fledged server. Again, when it comes to Pogo Plug, when I talk to the guys, they're like, okay, listen, I designed the interface for my mom. Right. If at any time she can figure something out, I redid the interface. This was the co-founder of Pogo Plug a couple right. years ago right. when they introduced it. So it's really dead simple. But, I mean, you have to have a little trust with the company when it comes to that. Okay. So I'm going to write another point on our list here, which is you've got to pay attention to security. You have password protection, but you might be want to be aware of the fact that, at least in the case of Pogo Plug, your data is not completely private. Right. You're going to have to do some of your own work to, to right. take care of that. But then again, super easy to use. Uh, obviously, you don't want to start sharing a whole bunch of things with the public Internet and be like, hey, here's all my files. Put it on Twitter. Here's my copy of Godfather Part 2. Right. Probably not the smartest idea. You're probably going to get yourself in a lot of trouble when it comes to that. All right, so we got apps for iPad and Android. We tried this stuff out. You know what? I'm kind of curious, though. Let's, let's talk to the audience. You guys plan on rolling your own cloud at home. We have a feature on this show where we're going to find out your feedback live uh, at the end of the show. Will you roll your own cloud? If you go to Twitter and use the hashtag TwitKnowHow, we'll see what you guys think. So let us know by the end of the show. We will put it up what you guys are doing. And uh, what do you think? So far, pretty easy to do, right, Leo? Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to kind of go through this in my own head. You buy the product. It's about 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. You attach your own storage to it. That could be an external hard drive. It could be, in the case of the Tornado plug, an internal hard drive. It could be an SD card on the Pogo plug. You put files on there. Can you, oh, this is a question. Uh, if I copy files over my LAN, am I copying at LAN speed or am I copying at internet speed? Uh, there are features on both that allow you to access it as a network drive. So, you so can it's be, a little faster right. to copy locally. Exactly, it's okay. a little faster to do it locally. Uh, what I would suggest when I was setting these up, I put all the files on to connect to an actual computer, connected the hard drive to that, then brought it over here. I wouldn't recommend hooking this up on your network and then loading it. That right. seems a little slow. So if you're going to put a ton of stuff, use the USB drive on your computer, load it up, mm -hmm. and then individual files, smaller files later, it's not such a big deal. I mean, obviously, when it comes to these devices as well, these are low powered. They don't use a lot of power, and you're running them all day. This is pretty hot. Every day. Say. Both of them are fairly warm to the touch, we've been, not, not super hot. But. We've been accessing files all day yeah. in prep of the show to see if it works or not. And obviously, when it comes to your devices, right, we have an Android device here. If I was going to watch a video, if your device can't play it back, so let's say I had an MKV file, right. not necessarily the iPad's thing, it's not going to be able to do it. 
Right. Android, though, if you have an application like mPlayer, you can watch those things. So it's these little things that you can do. Uh, they're not going to have exactly the same capabilities so per device. this doesn't do any magic to the file format. Your playback device has to understand the file format. Pogoplug's got an extra thing with that. It's true for the most part what you said. Okay. They can transcode your video to a watchable format, but that's with the processor that's in here, which is not exactly super powerful. So right. if you have, I don't know, so maybe you took a Blu-ray disc and you burned it or ripped it, that is, and you have this giant 25 gigabyte file, it might take it a long time to transcode. But if you have a tiny, like, MP4s run fine on like an iPad, but if you have like a DivX file, that kind of thing, it might take it a couple of minutes before you can start watching the stream. That's interesting. So let me get this straight. So I could copy a DivX file to here. Mm -hmm. It would internally automatically encode it in the format that then the Pogo Plug software could play back on an iPad or other iOS device. Right. I'm, I, actually, I could bring that up. I'm going to try to bring that up and I'll try to hand over the... That's interesting. Here's a DivX copy of a movie that probably has way too many swears for a family show. Well, we aren't play the audio. We'll just... So look at that. It says optimize it. Yes, optimize it is the option. You can do that. And what it's, So is that the transcoding going on? It says right now in progress. And one of the weird things about Pogo Plug is that you have to go to the website to see how far the transcoding is going. I'm going to hit OK, cool. And after a while, it'll be able to be see, I can focus. accessible. I can, I, can, I can zoom in, but I can't focus. Wait a minute, let me focus, press the Leo. focus button. Breathe, focus I'm not good at me. focusing. Look at that. This oh, is good. the PTZ camera. That's, yeah, that's so, fun. But then again, if you have a local file that's not local file, you want to watch original MP4, those usually run pretty smooth on a device because like you're, this. And now, in this case, again, you're playing it back over the network mm -hmm. from the Pogo plug. Look and at there that. goes a that's movie. That's really cool. Obviously, when it, comes to these, when it comes to this kind of thing, when you encode your video, if you're going to make your own files, this might be a consideration you do when you are setting up your home server. That might be a whole other episode, setting up right. your home server. Right. But uh, what was I going to say? When it comes to this device, we have so many cool things with the Pogo Plug. Can you, do you have to use the Pogo Plug software, or can we use other, other people's software to do this? On the Pogo Plug, when it comes to playback? Yeah. On, on the iPad? Yeah. Uh, well, on the iPad, you can, use their, their, uh, you can use their app. But if you're on your laptop, you can go to my.pogoplug.com. Plug, my and play back, download, oh, do all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's cool. So you're not always stuck necessarily. Right. All right. So let's say you don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's go with software. I options. don't want to do that. You got an old computer sitting around? I got an old computer. I've got, I've got lots of these things. So you don't, ha in other words, let's not buy this. Let's do something we've already got. Let's run got. our own server. Forget all right. this. Okay. We have Tonito. I know Tonito from their software in the first place. Yes. I used to run this a long time ago. Yeah, you don't need the hardware. You, it's open source software which you can run yourself. Right. You can get. You can go to Tonito.com and get the software for free. Run it on your PC. Okay. Tell it which files you want to share, what access you want to give, and you can have multiple users. Again, very powerful for Tonito. So you literally can roll your own with your own hardware. Do. I need to install Linux first, or does Tonito give me an ISO that I could just install the whole thing in one swell foop? It's Tonito gives you the option to run that uh, software on Linux, uh, Windows, oh. Mac OS X. Oh. So it doesn't matter what computer you have. You know, it's just a piece. It's just an application that's running on your operating Got system. It. So it. it's it's that's cool. really simple. Pogo Plug also introduced their own version of that, similar idea. I believe that costs thirty dollars when right. you want to buy that software. Right. Again, one of the easier interfaces you're going to see when it comes to sharing your files. Very cool. Okay. Okay, what's the other weird one? This one is, I've been trying to tell everybody about this. Opera users, you guys are going to be like super ecstatic because nobody ever talks about this. Opera lets you do this? Opera, the browser, the, browser? the web browser, has a built-in feature called Opera Unite. Now, it's very powerful. It's the same thing. You sign up, you get, you get a URL. I'm running it right now on my laptop. Let's see if we can get a screen of this. Let's get Opera Unite up and get this full screen. File sharing right from the browser. You can set up what, what you want to share. Huh. There are all kinds of applications on this as well. So you can have there's a media player, a messenger. These phone. are like plugins in effect. These are the, plugins, and the crazy thing. But you're thing running is, this in the Opera browser. It's in the Opera. It's built in. This, I didn't add anything yet. This is in here already. So if you want, you can give out the URL to lots of people. Like I did this. I had pictures of my 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 newborn. I didn't want it on Facebook. Right. I want to be able to take my files away. Right. Like with something like this, when you're running your own server, you can just take the files off the drive. They're no longer available. Opera Unite. You get a URL. You can password protect. I got to write this down. This is great. And this is free. This is free. Wow. And this is the other thing. The setup, there's like no setup. When you set up Opera Unite, you go, okay, share this folder, share these files, and then give out the URL. You're wow. already done. 
Wow. It, it was so it was so I should really this is this goes up here with this. It's free, it's simple. I just couldn't believe that that was actually a built-in feature for Opera. I mean, I mean think of the old days, they used to set up F FTPs and give out links and like make sure you have F FTP software to get this. But again, when it comes to any of this, any of this stuff, you can always take the files off. You're not worried about, hey, do they have a copy of my file? Right. Are they right. keeping this somewhere? Right. No, this is your files right, right. here. Uh, Opera you you might have access to your data if you use Opera. Right, same, well, yeah. When you, right. You're giving up a bit of, of... Privacy. Privacy when it comes For to... flexibility. Absolutely. You know how iCloud likes to take your photos and they can put it in the photo stream? Mm -hmm. And there's also the same thing with Dropbox. Mm -hmm. uh, Google Pog has that also. Yep. Pogo Google Plug Plus. allows you to do that. You can automatically set up your files to upload immediately, so you're not worried about that. So there's... You have to try out each one. What's the best solution for you when it comes to... Do I go with the Pogo Plug? Do I want super simple? Mm -hmm. This is super simple, Pogo Plug. Do I want flexible? Tonito. You can put a lot of things on there. Do you want to just do something right now, like I want to share a file right really fast? Opera Unite's pretty good for this. Because you already have it. And the craziest thing, I got to say, this is, this is something that happens when we meet Dropbox all the time. You can't introduce anything more. I've run out of space on the Blackboard. <laughs> when it comes to Dropbox, actually, you have something that says upload speed. You don't worry about upload. It's already there. Right? It's already shared. You upload it, but you upload it before the time you need it. Exactly. So it's on the cloud. You're not waiting yeah. for a little thing to go, oh, it's uploading. Is it uploading? That is one nice thing about Dropbox. If you set up a Dropbox folder, it copies it at its leisure. Mm -hmm. You may not have access to it in the cloud right away, but sometime later you will, and you don't have to worry about it. You're not copying anything. A, waiting for that public so link to be available. That's an important distinction about these, is your upload speed becomes the gating factor. Yeah, your upload speed is the gating yeah. factor, but then again, you're not worried. If you had a slow upload speed, you're not worried about, okay, how long is this file going to take to get to the right. to get to the cloud? you got your cloud right here. Another consideration, and I can tell because I'm watching these things work, is they are powered up and on, and they will use, I don't know how much juice, but they do use some juice yeah, they're, all the time. They're pretty low-powered. Marvell chipset is designed to be a low-power. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're far less than most laptops or right. old PCs. If, I know. It's probably the hard drive using more power than anything else. If you have an old PC, think about that power yeah, supply, like, what, 120 watts right. for, like, a right. Pentium something or other? Right, right. This is so much, low, so much more low-powered. Good. We should take a look. What, the, what is the audience doing? Do they, are they we got some roll? great tweets. I've seen a, dozens of tweets. Are they going to roll in. their own cloud, Colin? What do we got? Let's see. We have a guy. We have a, uh, Dudley, Dudley Kenny. He's saying he's going to roll his own cloud, set up his own cloud. I'm almost ready to roll my own cloud. Is there a way to use Pogo Plug or Tonito to do offsite backup? That's Gary Alberts wants to know that. I guess. I mean, oh, I don't Tom know. Tom Johnson. I'm sorry. Tom Johnson said that, brought it in. I'm not sure if you can do that automatically. I mean. I know you can upload to these things from here. It's like if I had my laptop or I had my phone and I wanted to upload a file to Tonito or, or Pogo Plug, I know I can do that. Some NAS uh, drives do have built-in backup software. They'll go and pull data. I would bet Tonito, given how flexible it is, has a plug-in that will be a backup plug-in. I would look at Tonito for that. And Tonito software for your, for your PC or Mac, they have a Tonito Pro option if you want to mm -hmm. install even more applications, applications and make it more powerful. So we're looking at the audience. How Eloy Tavera says, I've had a pogo plug for about six months and love it. A lot of people have used the pogo plug and are very happy. Yeah, the pogo plug, again, I, I can't say how simple this is. I mean, yeah. it's really bizarrely simple. The biggest change I've seen with pogo plug in the past three years is they changed their logo from, blue to, from pink to blue. <laughs> That's about it. Well, my first pogo plug, the box was pink. Just, they have gone to a little bit more professional looking. Uh, Michael Holzinger says, I roll my own cloud with version 2 Pogo Plug. Eric Benkert says, I've used a Pogo Plug with iffy results. He's not a big fan of it. Um, a lot of people. I'm seeing dozens of tweets coming in. This is great. Trevor says, Dropbox is enough for me now. Once I get into archiving, I'll look into the Pogo Plug. Um, it's just there's so much more flexibility when it's your, when it's your own hardware. When right. something's wrong, obviously that becomes a thing. Right. It's your issue if something goes wrong. You are the admin now. You're not like, what's going on with those idiots in North Carolina and their data <laughs> servers? What's going on there? You're not well, worried about that. But I should point out that their data servers are hardware backup, uh, power backup. Mm -hmm. They've got cooling. You're relying on your own internet and electricity. You may not be as reliable as those servers in North Carolina or North this is, Virginia. You don't have redundancy right away right. unless you're running a RAID attached to this. I mean, you could attach a RAID to it if you but wanted to. But you're doing to. it yourself, and that's really what know-how is all about. Yeah, you, you have this in your own house. I, I've had this uh, kind of set up for myself for a long time because when I saw iTunes Match and I saw these, oh, I can get my music in the cloud. Right. Like, well, yeah, I was doing that forever. I don't have to, like, even, you're not worried about syncing times right. with your phone. 
tablet or whatever. Again, it's all in the cloud. And sharing features of both Pogo Plug and Tineo Plug are similar where I could send somebody a link and they'll be able to just download that file from my server. Yes, they'll be able to download files from your server when it comes to music and movies and pictures. And the web interface is pretty simple for that. So if you don't necessarily want to have a download on your on your tablet or right. something, you can have the option of any full-featured web browser. So, well, should we run down uh, what we've learned today? Are you ready? Do you have something else? I think we're ready for the rundown. All right, let me see if I got all my notes, because I was taking notes. Remember, the puffy little cloud, that's where the uh, stuff is stored on the internet. You can bring that puffy little cloud into your own home. We've got actually three products, two hardware products, the Tonito plug, a little co more complicated, a little more power user focused. Mm -hmm. They also have Tonito software you can run on your own box. Same thing with Pogo plug, and Pogo plug is a very consumer friendly hardware device, both about a hundred bucks. Don't forget Opera, what's it called? Opera Unite, it's in Opera when you buy, when you buy, when you, you download already have Opera it if you for have free. The browser. It's already there. Absolutely. Remember, you're going to configure them from the browser using mm -hmm. a local uh, IP address, usually something be, like this. It'll be in the directions. It's, it's actually a little bit more friendly than that, so right. it's, it'll be pretty simple. You can also store music, photos, video, and in, in many cases, play it back with apps that Tonito or photo, uh, a Pogo Plug provides for your portable devices. And those apps are free. But do keep an eye on upload speed, because if you are have an internet service provider that doesn't offer a lot of upload speed, it could be that... Your download speed and your friend's download speeds when you're outside the house is not so great. And keep security in mind. You have a password, use a strong password. And remember that in some cases, Tonito or Pogo might be able to see your data, so you might want to use encryption if privacy is paramount. When you're putting things on the internet, you better be careful what you're doing. You want to make sure that if they're your files, you don't want them getting out, especially if there's some questionable things about that. Did I get uh, that all right? I think you nailed it, Leo. I think we learned something I, here I, today. I think that's the way it works. And what are you using at home for yourself now? Me? I I use some software that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Motor <laughs> <laughs> Motorola used to have, uh, they bought this thing called ZumoCast, and ZumoCast was this I remember great them. Yeah. server, and it became Motocast now. Yeah. That's kind of closed off. I think it's now available for greater Android devices, but I had it running on my, uh, my Mac Mini for a long time, and I had, I was using that for a bit. Right now, because Motorola's kind of killed it a bit, like I can still access my files, I have to pick a new hero. And you haven't decided? No, I haven't decided just yet. Uh, because I have to, there's so many options. There's pro and pros and cons on both. I probably, well, what I do is I'll run 10 of them at the same time. It doesn't matter <laughs> if one of them goes down and then one of them is working. It's, it's pretty good that way. Uh, if you want to contact us, if you've got ideas for us to do, or, like, or if you want to tell us how your experience went, you can send us an email at knowhow at twit.tv. That's K-N-O-W-H-O-W at twit.tv. I'm zooming in on you. There you yes, go. Yes, uh, where's my eye? There, there, it, there is. it is. Okay, if you, <laughs> if you don't want to stare at my face this closely ever, you can send us a voicemail at 408. I'm pushing another button. Whoa, 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 where are we going? No one knows. Round and round she goes. No one knows. So you have a special number, not toll free, by the way. Not toll free. Uh, if you if you would like to complain about being motion sick, you can <laughs> you can give us a call at 408 800 K N O W. That's 408 800 5669. And don't forget, by the way, that during every live show at three o'clock on Thursdays, that's Pacific time, we're gonna see your live feedback yeah, on Twitter. So you can always use that hashtag or the chat room. We pay attention. Chat, to the chat room is great too. too but yeah. the hashtag we can put you your name and your avatar on the screen really easily. With the hashtag twit know how, that's T W I T K N O W H O W. So that's great. We really appreciate uh, your watching our first episode ever. Uh, as I as mentioned, we do this show 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC on Twit Live, live.twit.tv. Watch live. But we have on demand versions, audio and video available for you, as always on the Twit website, twit.tv, or iTunes, or the Zoom Music site, wherever you get your podcasts. What are we doing next week? Do you know? Next week. Not, we're not going to do r, &R. I next gave week, you some hardware. Next week we can do some J&R. Uh, J&R? That's right. Some jailbreaking and rooting. Woo! We're gonna, I gave you some. We got a note. I got my iPad that I want to I want to do some more things with this and they're not letting me. I'm going to jailbreak that. Wow. We have a Kindle we might mess we're with. We're going to mess with a Kindle? And you know those silly skins on top of Android? Yeah. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to fix that. That was cool, Iaz. I feel good. I feel like I know how to roll my own cloud. So, now that you know how, do it now! We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. Ooh.